Hey everyone, so recently we got the damage formula for the game and it helped us understand exactly how damage works and what each skill does to your damage. Myself and a few friends on these calls recently have spent a lot of time trying things out and understanding how the damage works. So we have a very good grasp on what skills are the best and that's what I'm gonna try to talk about today. So today's video is gonna be split into three parts. The first one is gonna be an overview on how damage works, so the damage formula. The second part will be the best genes for the monsters. And finally, the last part will be recommendations on skills for the rider. Okay, so let's take a look at how damage works then. Keep in mind that for the sake of this video, I will oversimplify the calculation of the damage. Just because there are so many variables, if I had to address everything, the video would be very confusing. However, for those of you who are interested, I will leave the full damage formula in the description. Okay, so basically, there are three parts to the damage calculations. The first is the attack stat of your monster. The second one is the monster that you are attacking and its defense. And the last one is the modifiers. So in the attack power, you have your monster attack stats, which is in the in-game uh, stat page. And the skill damage and flat bonuses are the stats attached to the monster's attacks or the passives. The target category is pretty simple. It just takes into account the target defense and which parts you are targeting. And finally, we have the multipliers. So you have your head-to-head -head, uh, modifier, which if you win the head-to-head, -head, you do more damage. You have your bingos. You have your critical if you do a critical hit and you have your buffs. Please note that all the multipliers are additive and not multiplicative. So for example, if you have a 20% bingo in element and a 10% bingo in speed, they will add up and you will have a 30% boost instead of multiplying between each other. Okay, so let's talk about the best monsters genes then. I will start with the best universal genes that I think should be on almost every monsters. And you probably guessed it, but we're gonna talk about Pump Up that you find on the Devil Joe. But to understand why it's so good, we need to take a look at the damage formula once again. Almost every single buff in the game for the monsters is added to the multipliers and bingo part of the equation. Pump Up is one of the only skills that directly multiply your attack power stats. Not only that, but it multiplies it by a good amount, 70% for 5 turns. It is a huge increase, and after your attack stat has been massively improved, it then gets multiplied by the multipliers and the bingos. So hopefully you can start to realize why Pump Up is so much better than other buffs, and why you should start using it. Ok, so let's talk about the other good genes for the monsters. And for that, we're gonna be focusing mostly on the attack power part of the equation. And the main stat here is your attack power stat. And depending on which monster you use at max level, it will be anywhere between 580 and 730. This is the part that gets buffed by pump up, which means after pump up is activated, most monster will be between 1100 and 1600. The next part is the flat bonuses. So it's passives like All Out, Vicious, and Salty Wound. Those add a flat attack boost of about 50 to 60 depending on which passive you use. And those do not get multiplied by Pump Up. So the higher level your monster is and the higher his attack is, the less relevant those skills become. In fact, when your monster has over 1600 attack power, then the 50 or 60 attack point that those skill brings to the table makes very little difference. So to summarize, the higher stats your monster has, the less benefit you get from those skills. So I would strongly suggest that you avoid them. And the last part is the skill powers. On monster attack, you often have the description that says does light damage, does medium damage, or does heavy damage. Light attacks usually add a flat 40 to your attack, medium adds a flat 60, and heavy 110. While the difference between a medium and a heavy attack seems huge, in fact heavy is almost double the stat of the medium attack, when you put that difference in comparison of your attack power stat, it's a very small difference and very negligible. 
If you take a monster that has about 13-1400 attack stats, the difference between a heavy and a medium attack will be 2-3% in damage. So what you really want to be looking for is A, an attack that can crit, and B, an attack that has a second benefit associated to it. My recommendation is either to get attacks that can inflict a status, or attacks that have an increased chance to crit. So to summarize, for the buffs, I strongly suggest you put Pump Up. Concerning the passives, the only one that you always want to have is Might Excel or Elemental Boost Excel, depending on what monster you use. If you can make good use of it, Heroix is also very good. It adds 35% to your bingo multipliers, which is very decent. Critical Excel is also okay. It adds 14% critical chance, which is decent, but not game breaking. If you want to use a defensive passive, you can do it, but I, let, I will let you decide uh, case by case. Now for the attacks. I would recommend that you choose A, an attack that can crit, B, an attack that is single target, and C, an attack that, that has a higher chance of critting or that adds a status to the monster. And remember that the higher stats your monster is, the less difference there will be between a medium damage attack and a high damage attack. Okay, so let's quickly talk about the rider's skill now. My recommendations for the riders is a little bit different than the one for the monsters. And the reason is their attack stat is a lot lower than the one of the monsters. And there is no way that I know of to directly increase the attack stat uh, significantly. That means that at max level, you have an attack stat of about 3 to 400, depending on which weapon you use. And all of a sudden, since the attack stat is so much lower, the flat bonuses from all out and those kind of skills represent a much bigger increase than on the monsters. Some of the best damage skills for riders are all out, vicious, salt in the wood XL, elemental XL, and heroics. Getting critical damage is also crucial to deal big damage with your rider. So in that sense, I would recommend to at least have one critical uh, chance skill for your rider. If you have to choose between critical XL and weak point XL, remember that weak points gives you 25% affinity, while critical gives you 16% affinity. So I would recommend that you choose weak point if you have the choice. My personal set in the game so far is the Rajang set. It has weak points XL and critical M, which gives you very good affinity. And it also gives you heroics, which is a very good offensive skill. And on my charm, I use Vicious XL and All Out XL, which gives me a huge damage boost. This is a very aggressive set though, and it's mostly suited for solo play, so feel free to change if you don't want to use this one. But that's pretty much it for this video. Let me know what you think. I know this was more of a complex uh, video to make, so if you have questions in the comment, please let me know, and I'll try to answer them. See you next time.